I forgot what I submitted for the uh, description. I can't do half of those things. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for staying till the end. My name is Liz Frost. Uh, I'm still in beta on Twitter. And if you want to find me on the Kate Slack, I am just Liz. I am a queer, trans, and polyamorous woman. I am a co-mom to a very cute and very fuzzy dog. If you follow me on Twitter, you're mostly going to get pictures of Flurry. Um, I work for a company called Heptio, which as of right now is still an independent company, but is soon to be a part of VMware. And perhaps most importantly to all of y'all, I created the Kubernetes Cube Cuddle Pony. Stickers are still available. Come find me afterwards. Uh, I'm not here to talk about any of that, though. I'm here to talk about Postgres. Specifically, I'm going to talk about Postgres foreign data wrappers. Get, get it? Um, tough crowd. Foreign data wrappers are a way for Postgres to query and manage data not stored in the database itself. They can be mundane, like ODBC or SQLite, something more exotic, like Cassandra or Redis, or even weirder. There are FDWs for like Hue bulbs. There's a list of FDWs, and you can use an FDW to query that list. And now I'm going to add Kubernetes to the mix. Uh, here's my very advanced technical diagram of how this is going to work. In essence, we'll put a Kubernetes client inside a database and have it talk to the Kubernetes API server. Uh, I'm a Kubernetes contributor, so unfortunately I'm mostly familiar with Go. Postgres wrappers are written in C, but thankfully somebody did the hard work of bridging the gap for me already. Shout out to uh, DenWC on GitHub. Um, I'm going to gloss over the days of debugging seg faults because this is a five-minute talk, and I'm going to skip ahead to where it's actually working. The first step is that we install the library. Uh, we do this by calling create extension inside Postgres, which tells it to load the object file. Uh, and then we can create a server, which for us just means a cluster. I pass in a cube config so that we can actually access it. And then we create a table. This is pretty freeform. You can have as many or as few fields as you'd like. I'm starting off with name and namespace. The alias option tells our wrapper which fields to retrieve from the Kubernetes object for those columns. We use the options field at the bottom to say what kind of objects we're looking for. In this case, we're looking at pods, and we're going to use the, uh, the Kate system namespace because I couldn't be bothered to make an example, so this is just kubeadm. Um, and then we run a query. This is a five-minute talk, so you're not going to get a live demo from me. You're just going to have to believe me when I say this actually works. But don't be sad. I've simulated demo syndrome for you. This error keeps me up at night because it's something very gnarly to do with memory corruption, but it does go to show that we are actually making network calls. If you can fix this, please come find me. I have no idea. If at first you don't succeed, try again. Consistently, running the same query again on a new connection basically always works. So you can see our names and our namespaces of a newly created Kate's master node with kubeadm right there. But what about something more complicated? Uh, we've got containers in a pod, but there's more than one container per pod. What if we just want to pull the first one out? Um, each pod can have multiple containers, so we can use JSON path. If you don't know JSON path, it's probably one of the most useful parts of the cube cuddle, the uh, command, not the pony. Um, it provides a useful, possibly familiar syntax for us. Uh, let's add that to our table. We use the same alias option we used before, but this time we wrap it in curly braces to signal its JSON path, and it works. The container URLs show up exactly as we expect them to. Lists are all fine and dandy, but how about something a little less structured? Labels are a good candidate for this because they're free form but still important. Uh, fortunately, Postgres has a built-in JSON type that'll work perfectly for this. So we add that in, and here we go, a bunch of JSON. And to prove to you that that isn't just a text field, we can query individual fields on the labels. I think that's pretty cool. It's like a little MongoDB inside your SQL. And for my last trick, I'm running out of time, but I've got one last thing. I'm going to need a few more tables. This is way too much text for a slide, but fortunately, we don't care about most of it. Um, we're just going to create new replica sets and deployment uh, tables. And that's right, we're going to do joins. We can use the fact that pod names, replica names, and deployment names share prefixes and combine them together. Worry no more about getting your pods and deployments confused. Uh, this is absolutely not production-ready software. Uh, error handling when the columns don't match is try not to do that. Uh, if you do get the right column type and it's not one of the ones I added specifically, it's still going to be very rough. And the code base is, well, I wrote it, it three days ago. There's more unit tests than you'd expect and more C than you'd probably like. Uh, thank you very much for your time.
We're on, this is on GitHub, this is on Slack, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Come find me, uh, I'm pretty distinctive. <laughs>